Welcome to episode of Pat Taste Performance. Today we have in my garage. Yes, it is snowing. Ah. If anybody doesn't know, this machine is an icon. This is your Craftsman 827, right? 8 horsepower, 27 inches, has an electric start. This machine has probably been around for about 10, 15 years, this design. Now, if you bought this with a Tecumseh on it, in nature, in theory, this should be green. All they did was change the paint scheme, Tecumseh went out of business, and they slapped a Briggs on here. Okay? Very nice machine. Oh, you know what? Gotta get you some light. Ah, you know what? You guys will survive, alright? On off switch, this is supposed to have a fuel shuttle valve, it is missing. I mean, it doesn't come included with it, but this is a Briggs & Stratton engine. Really nice, really quiet. Here's your electric start. It is busted. Here is your stator. No, I really should get you guys some light. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode of Pat Taste Performance. Today we have in the garage an Icon. Craftsman. 8 horsepower, 27-inch clearing path, 2-stage snowblower. This design has to be anywhere from 10 to 15 years old. If you have this machine in a Tecumseh powered version, the machine is green instead of red. When Tecumseh went out of business and they switched to Briggs & Stratton, because nobody else was around, they changed the paint scheme and slapped the motor on it. That is it. Now it is snowy outside and it's dark, so I, can't, I have a green one. But in the meantime, I'm just going to show you a green one that I restyled, restored, and upgraded. See? Same stuff. Anyhow, uh, let's go through the machine. It's beautiful. You, if you own this machine, you have a beautiful machine. Right? This thing should at least throw snow 30 to 40 feet without an upgraded impeller. With the upgraded impeller, you're probably looking at 50 to 60 feet. Easy. Maybe even more if it's powdery. Unfortunately... I have not been able to upsell that on this machine. And though I'm going off on a tangent, I actually almost didn't have this guy as a repair because he owns a snow removal business and he said he has eight snow blowers. Like, all right, why are you telling me this? Oh, because he wants to try and beat me up and get a cheaper price. No, that's not how it works. Sorry. Nope, sorry. My, my work is good. I know what other people charge, so if you don't like it, Go back to them. Obviously, you're contacting me for good reason. Anyway, back to the machine. How about this? Before we start, this, the only downside about this machine, that's right, negative. It's one negative. The only downside is this right here, this plastic shoe. I go through these like crazy. I actually keep them in stock because they're always going. What you need to do is you find an older version right like uh, here open this up it's snowing see this right here Turn my lights on this is made of metal this metal will bolt right onto that and that's what you need you actually get a little bit more accuracy and you don't have to worry about that thing cracking anyway let's get back to the machine 8 horsepower 27 inch believe it or not this machine was not made by MTD. This machine was actually made by Murray. So, 8 horsepower, 27 inches, really nice thick shoe. Like I said, these things really hold their weight well. Look at these skid shoes, pretty massive. Another downside, they're pretty damn expensive in the relative cost of skid shoes. If you have to replace your skid shoes, if I were you, if you're going to spend that type of money on OEM skid shoes, upgrade to armor skids and thank me later. Okay, so we have a smooth auger, which is fine. Okay, this machine should have grease fittings in here, but they are missing. So, that's life. That's him, not me. It's in really, really good shape, too. Okay, it's missing. I guess you would say, here's your muffin, like your tailpipe. There's a little hook over here. Not a big deal. And there's another screw. There should be another screw over here. Yep, missing a screw. God, do I know my stuff or what? 
Anyhow, it's got these nice, really tall, knobby tires. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful for tire chains. If you guys, once again, see my picture for the ones that I restyle or store for resale, I really do put tire chains on them. This machine is killer. This thing will annihilate old man winter. No grease fittings on the body like an Arian's, just on the augers, which something is better than nothing. Okay, so onto the engine. Briggs & Stratton Ace Horsepower engine, beautiful, nice and quiet compared to Tecumseh of its size and power. Um, nonetheless, still great. We have our electric start. It's been busted. Here's your stator for a power output. You can run headlights if you'd like, which you should. Okay. <laughs> Six speed forward, two speed reverse. This thing should have a fuel, uh, fuel uh, shut off valve. Some of them do, some of them don't. On this machine, it didn't come with it, but the template is still there. This is your kill switch on and off. Here is your key. Okay. And it's just choking throttle all of the same. See that? Cold? Warm. You even have it labeled. So this is choke. This is for his workers, I guess. Okay, this is your handle right here. It is missing like a black sleeve so you could kind of roll it, you know, like a, like as you roll it, the sleeve spins and your hand doesn't. It's odd to remark. Here's your primer button. Okay, yeah, and you can hear it has prime. Here is your tools, right? Shear pins. He's got extra shear pins in there. Good for him. He's a smart guy. I actually like that. Okay, now why is it here? He wants a tune-up. He says it doesn't throw his snars as far as it should. And let's see, is this busted? Yeah. Needs a new recoil. Needs a new recoil. So that's that. Oh, I thought we were going to be able to just order... I mean, just, you know, redo the string. But it seems like it shot. So let's see if this thing runs. He said it did run. A little bit of gas in it. But let's see. It's like another thing that aggravates me. People bring their equipment with no fuel in it. All right, let me put the fuel in this thing. All right, so I got some fuel in it. Let's prime it. Let's see if she starts. I wonder if maybe they just... On. Yeah. Of course not. Not want to start. Yep. Now I wonder if this recoil is good, but okay. That's it. Doesn't. So, for your viewing pleasure, I am going to put this in the service position. You do not have to do this for this repair. Okay, so since we're doing the service position to stop fuel from spilling, I'm going to put a plastic bag over that. Now, technically, that's my newspaper bin. So, we're going to put this in the service position, and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so it's up in this service position just for you guys to see this in a better light per se. If it was actually during the day, I probably would have done it in a regular position. Anyhow, the biggest complaint I get with people, it's kind of like my pet peeve, I always see people on the forums and online bashing this engine and the design that Briggs didn't know what they were doing, he had to take everything apart, they'll take pictures, they'll take videos, and write a paragraph. Just shut up, you moron. By the time he got done doing all of that, you could have this machine running and going, the recoil put back together, just as fast as and just as much time you have consumed to do this. Now, because I'm showing you guys, it's going to take probably a lot longer. 
you need maybe five to six hand tools, right, to get this done. And that's it. Your Torx to get the engine cover off. Your 3 8 right? There's 3 8 to get the shielding off. And I think to you, we have to get this, yep, and this I think should be 5 16 so you have to get this out too for the starter. All right, we also have to remove this plate too. This I think should be 3 8 to a half inch. So let's start with this plate first, all right? Okay, so like I said, three eighths. Just like that, start it. It's a really weird camera angle, but. Come on. Try not to have this fly out. Cause I got you guys in one hand. All right, so this comes out. And then we also have to do it to this side too. Nice and easy. Put that in a dedicated spot. Okay, and then you just pull up and put this down to the side. Okay, now let's work on this engine cover. Very simple. These two torque bolts and the bottom of your carburetor will be exposed. Okay, so here we are. This should be a T25. Well, it says a T25, but I think the correct socket size is either 5 16 or 8 millimeter. We're using torque. Once I get these out, I'll just stick it uh, I'll stick it in a socket and update you guys. Okay, these two are out. When I drop that, oof, lucky that thing hit the ground. Bottom of the carburetor cover is exposed. So just simply pull it out. Okay. And slide it down and get it out of the way. Okay, and just so you guys know, I did stick it in a socket. It is a 5 16 The next is, we're going to have to take off this shield, this cover here. That's going to expose the other bolts for the cover. Okay, that comes out. And then we could swing this out of the way. Because you see that here? Can you guys see that bolt down there? Let's see. See that bolt down there? That's one of them. Last but not least, we'll take this one off right here. All right, so we have that carburetor cover bolt, I mean the electric star cover bolt right here. All right, so 930 seconds, and this comes right out. Now, just so we don't lose this stupid cover, stick it right back in. Now we get to the fun part. Now we actually get to remove the cover. All right, so let's talk about removing this cover. It should be three bolts, 10 millimeter, one. Two, right underneath the fuel tank. And three, right by the carburetor exposing it, and we are free and good to go. So, I got my 3 8 extension, 10 millimeter, and we're off. One, right, two, numero trace, right here, three. Can you guys see that? Alright. Let me get that back. This is pretty easy to pull on its own. 
I don't want to lose those. For these, because they're a little tricky, I'll just stick my maggot in there. Can I stick my fingers in there? Of course not, because it's not all the way out. You know this? I have the camera in one hand, and you and my ratchet in the other. I'm trying not to drop anything, because if I do, it's a pain in the ass, because my garage is packed out. Alright, let's see if... Yep, we're free. And now the cover should come right off. Now, the thing is with the cover, you have to play with the shifter. You kind of have to pull, Let's see if I can set you guys up. This is a bad angle. That's life. Alright, hopefully I capture Now, because it's underneath the carburetor, this is an aftermarket carburetor too. There might be a problem. When the aftermarket carburetors, the fuel inlet, actually, so you see what I did? I twisted it, twisted it counterclockwise, and now I'm pulling it out towards me. And we are free. Here is your recoil. He's saying he thinks that this is shot. And I say it's good. Alright. Let's cut out the rope and the handle. And we'll get you guys down onto common folk ground. Alright, so <clears throat> I'm gonna cut out his old rope. Yeah. We'll cut that out. Now, if yours is missing, that's even better. All right, there's going to be a little bit of rope here. All right? Come on. You know, my wife has my good cutters because she was doing Christmas lights. And all right, can you imagine my wife has my $60 snap on cutters? to cut zip ties. I guess that's how I justify having tools of that caliber. Meanwhile, she can get a $3 set of dykes from Harbor Freight and they'll be just fine. Nope. Doesn't want to do that. Has to go into my toolbox and get my goddamn dykes. Let me go get them. The Alright, we're back. The good stuff. Snap on, blue point, the mini pliers, junk. So, anyway, here's a little funny tidbit. This looks identical to a lawnmower recoil. So, let's just say you're in a jam and you actually break the recoil spring or any other components inside, and you're in a jam. If you have a brick and strap lawnmower, pull it out. Alright, so we're just going to pull this out, and away goes the recoil. So, let's give this thing a couple of spins. Actually spins pretty good. So you're supposed to turn this thing like um, two and a half to three turns. So let's just see. Let's get tension. I like to get tension first. And then what I like to do is I start my revolutions. Once I start to feel tension and it lines up right here. See that there and there? So that's, that's our dead zone. So now we're going to be one revolution. Here's two revolutions, 
and this is three. It actually feels pretty good, but let's give a fourth one. Because he says his recoil is shot. Okay, that recoil is good. So let's do this one more time. I obviously don't need to go this extra step because the machines. So we got tension. One, two, three. We'll do a fourth one. All right, let's stick our handy dandy pick. Okay, you see this here? Remember, the rope goes here, and it has to go through that hole right there once I get a better view. See this here? This little at clove? Your rope goes through the recoil housing here and slides right into there. All right, so I have the old rope to measure. The rope that I use is Sten's. Four cycle push mower. This, I actually use this on everything. Weed whackers, backpack blowers. It's got a pull start. This rope is going on. Part number 145612. 100 feet of number 5. 532 diameter. Stens. I buy it in bulk. Nice and cheap. Alright, so you need to do get a... I'm using a torch, but get a lighter. Okay. Going to get this nice and hot. We're going to make this nice and pointy too. You guys see that? Because this is nylon based, it's plastic. You're going to see it start to shrivel up. If you have manly hands, this is, if you have girly hands, this is going to hurt. If you have manly hands, it's going to feel nothing at all. I'm going to make this nice and pointy. Okay, turn around and do the same thing to the other side as well. If it starts to smoke, it's okay. It's normal. Alright, this is taking longer than usual because the rope is wet because I let it hit my garage floor and all the snow that's on this machine is melted and became wet. Turn this on. Alright, let me make this a point. Could be sharper, but we're going to use that to go through the um, handle instead of the recoil. Now, sometimes this goes nice and easy, and sometimes this is a pain in the ass. So we're going to stick it through here, right? Woo! Look at that. Well, oh, no, 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 no. I'm trying to get a good angle to show you guys. Hold on, hold on. See that first shot? I set it right through that hole. And can you guys see it? Right through there. All right. You get your needle mills, your dikes, right, and just pull this out. See that? No crazy boy scout double box notch. Just take it. That's it. It's like your pretzel knot. That's it. Pull it nice and tight. And let it go. Let's get our handle. And just stick it right through here. Same knot. Same knot, right? Cross it over. Now, the trick. Actually, there is no trick really. Let me get this out of the way. For a when you guys release this recoil, right, do not just let it fly. Hold it. See it? Just like that. And that's it. Grab it and just let it go. Nice and easy. Okay, see how it wound all the way in? Now he said it was shot. Let's see. I don't know. Looks good to me. Now what I want to do, you don't have to, but inside here is a metal spring. Right? You're going to see this metal tip right here. That's an opening. I don't know if you guys can see. 
you see this right here? There's a metal tip hanging out. Spray some uh, some lubricant in there. Doesn't hurt. Check it one more time. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know. Looks good to me. So let's put this back together. Alright, so let's get this in there. Same way we got it off. So let's get it in there. Remember we had to tilt it. So let's tilt it in towards the machine. Towards the carburetor. Let's see if we can kind of sneak that through. Yep, see we're in there already. So let's make sure when we put it in, we line up the bolts. Now it's not lining up. So let's see if it's something as simple as we just gotta get it to line up. So let's have a look. It needs to be over the chain. So what I'm pawing at, there's a little bolt over the, um, for the gas tank. But what we need to do is get these keys in. go. We're in business. Okay. Let's get a good view. You see this bolt here underneath the fuel tank? Let's see. This one right here. Can you guys see that? Okay, that I needed to get a screwdriver pry it. You see these metal trim pieces? These stay on the outside, not on the inside. So let's put this back together, the three bolts. All right, so remember the three bolts that we took off go right back on. Now because this is a hardened steel bolt and this block is aluminum, they're two different metals. They like to rust and adhere to each other. I'm putting some anti-seize on there. If you're not going to put anti-seize on there, that's fine. It's always good to put some sort of lubrication on these bolts, right? I mean, there's... um. Uh, this isn't a PG-13 channel, right? So, never want to put, never want to stick it in dry. You guys know that for obvious reasons. So, as you guys can see, also, I'm starting these by hand. Please do that. You do not want to take something so simple and be all crazy with your guns, your impacts, all these fancy tools. I got fancy tools. I got tons of them. Please, no matter what you do, please start these by hand. I can't stress that more than enough. Because when you start it with an impact, you're going to strip it most of the time. And you can't feel. You can't feel that. So see, I'm starting this by hand and the angle's a little off. So I'm going to see if I could I run it down with an impact. So feel it by hand. And 
know that it's good. Now here's the last one, the tricky one. Right? Uh oh. They're two different ones. This might not be the one. See what happens? I should have never mixed these. So the bolts for your engine block and the bolts for your shifter cover are different. I just made the mistake of putting different in there. See that? Look at this. Coarse and fine. The fine ones need to go inside the house. And you see what happens if I would have done that with my impact? <laughs> I would have stripped this block. I really would have stripped it. I mean, I would have had to retap it. And... But, you know the deal. It would have been in for a bad day. Something so simple now becomes difficult. I'm going to put the third one in. Now the last one is a little tricky. What I like to do is just kind of sneak it in right here. And start it by hand. Whew. Let's get a ratchet. And run it down. say for the carburetor and remember I put that back in its spot so it's not a pain in the ass to find. All right, I have a really good habit of doing that of putting screws back where they are in certain areas depending on what you're doing because there's no guesswork. Take it out and put it right back in. I'm going to use our 830 seconds I'm sorry 930 seconds and it's nice and tight. Okay. We're going to put our covers back on. I know I really shouldn't be because I have a feeling this thing is going to need a carburetor. And this is an aftermarket carburetor. And it's missing the filter screen. Because these people are hacks. It's not detrimental. But for some reason, I am like a big stickler. What comes on should go back off. If you're not going to do it that way, at least let the customer know. But, you know, this needs to, those need to go back on. It's just a screen. So here's a fun fact. Why don't snow blowers have air filters? Like your car, your lawnmower. If you have other small engine equipment, backpack blowers, weed whackers. Right? What makes you say that? What makes you... What makes you think why? Right? Think. We use all of those things, right, in warmer weather in the summer. There's stuff in the air. Dirt, grime, pollen. Think about all these little things that will contaminate your engine if they get inside. You get none of those in the winter. Zero. The rain, the moisture in the air keeps all that stuff down. There's no dust. There's virtually no dust in the winter. So you don't need an air filter. And air filters sometimes trap moisture and get wet and freeze up on you. And guess what? Now you got no air and the engine isn't running anymore. So let's put this back in. Now how do you know which way it goes? Well, it's pretty simple. Remember, the numbers face you when we do that. So let's do some persuasion. So again, starting by hand.
Now these bolts do have anti seize on them. Because I mean you don't like that. But you don't have to if you don't want to. No one's telling you, like I said, I just don't like to put things in dry. That's actually a 10 millimeter too. Sometimes, sometimes three eats works, sometimes it doesn't. So let's see, let's show you what's missing here. This is an aftermarket carburetor, which is fine. It's still expensive, about 50 bucks. There's a screen that goes here, and that's missing. So now that we have this off, now we can see it's a recoil bolt. And to see if this thing will run, which we really. Let me check the time for the noise ordinance. Yep, we got a little bit of time. Check some gas. Fire in the hole. Ooh, can you see that? All right, let's get this out. Do not want to blow smoke inside the garage. You really want to breathe that stuff in. Let's see. Come on. As the engine warms up, I was moving the choke over. something that I noticed. All right, he's saying he's having trouble throwing snow. Check this out. Check out this impeller. I don't know if you guys could see. Look at that. He blew the gearbox. This has a blown gearbox. See that? Look at this thing. Let me go tell him, let me know he has a blown gearbox. Alright, so I just sent him a video breaking him the bad news. But nonetheless, the purpose of this video is to show you how to repair this recoil. So, 
If you guys found this video helpful, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. Later.